The governor of the Bank of England uh, yesterday warned of, and I quote, apocalyptic food prices. He said he felt helpless in the fight against inflation as he told MPs that the war in Ukraine in particular could worsen the cost of living crisis, in particular the cost of food. And, of course, this comes after a minister, Rachel McLean, claims people should work longer to deal with the spiralling costs. The Northern Ireland Secretary, Brandon Lewis, I'm glad to say, joins us now. Very good morning to you. Morning. Mr Lewis, good we morning. appreciate you are a very busy man, I mean, particularly with this Northern Ireland uh, protocol, and you have your own announcement to, to make as well. But, you know, this cost of living crisis, as we've just been discussing, affects every single sector, doesn't it? Is it really sensible for the government to be saying to people, well, just get yourself a better paid job? Oh, you're right. It affects absolutely every sector. And I was fortunate enough to be able to hear the, the end of that last interview. It's a very good reminder, as you said, Suzanne, as well, that it, the creative arts industry is a huge employer and an important part of our economy, and as well as brightening our lives when we get to see the benefits of that. Uh, and look, I think the point that Rachel was... Well, I know the point that Rachel was making yesterday was this wider issue around the economy and that the government's job is partly, as well as supporting people where we can, is growing an economy so there are more opportunities for people out there to have secure jobs in the future, something that we've been successful as a country, businesses creating jobs since we came out of COVID. But as a, as a government, we will always keep under review what we can do to support people in the short term, whilst also, obviously, for the Chancellor, having to have an assessment of the impact that has in the medium and the long term as well. Why don't you introduce a windfall tax on the fuel companies? You've, you've got a debate in, in, in the House later on today, an amendment uh, tabled on the Queen's speech. It's obviously Labour um, asking you to or insisting that you, you introduce a windfall tax. Just about every expert in the field, including... The chairman of British Petroleum, BP no less, says they think it's a good idea and it would, at a stroke, solve many of our short-term problems. You're going to say no, obviously. Are you going to vote against this afternoon? But are you going to do a U-turn in the next two or three weeks, maybe in the next month? And in, because we keep hearing persistent rumours uh, from, from the Treasury in particular and from Number 10 that you are thinking about it. Well, the Chancellor, I think, himself outlined, uh, I think only yesterday, actually, but certainly over the last couple of days, that we want to see the investment coming through. I think some of the predictions that we've seen Labour put forward around what a windfall tax could bring in are somewhat overinflated. But, look, the reality is what we want to see is business investing. You're quite right. I, I understand what the Chairman of BP outlined, but that's one company, and the Chancellor and the Prime Minister have to look at the entire sector. But, as I say, the Chancellor, I think, just in the last couple of days, has outlined that if this, he wants to see those investments coming through, but he'll keep this under review. If we don't see the investments coming through, obviously he takes nothing off the table. The That's what the job is, of government is, is Lewis, to keep these the, things the, in perspective yeah, and under review. the point is, of course, is that you want to, you know, in a crisis like this, people get frustrated when they hear mm. that it's down to individuals mm. to make choices or to change what they do, when we know it's individuals, particularly those at the lower end of the scale, who are going to be struggling most. So it just seems obvious that you tax the excess profits rather than people. Well, also, this is the, my, my point, and one of the things the Chancellor, the Prime Minister and the business sector all have to look at is what are the medium and long-term impacts of these kind of decisions as well. If we want to see these companies investing in uh, more technology to improve our energy security in the UK and be creating more jobs in the future, what do we do in the short term that doesn't detrimentally and actually affect that and actually encourages that? So all of these things are part of the equation. That's why it's always right for uh, the Treasury to take okay. the time to look at these well, things in detail. you're just going to be looking at it. What about VAT on energy? bills. Um, you know, I spoke to your colleague Michael Gove about this last week. Before the referendum 2016, he said leaving the EU means we could get away with cutting VAT, getting rid of it on energy bills, and that would help the poorest. Now, he says, we can't do that because actually doing that would disproportionately help the richest. People have got a right to be confused. Well, VAT is a, is a effectively a flat tax that applies to everybody. That does have the impact of benefiting some of the wealthier people when you cut it. But at the same time, one of the challenges we're facing in Northern Ireland, of course, is some of the changes the Chancellor brought in to benefit people in the UK can't be applied, particularly with VAT, for example, in Northern Ireland because of the protocol. But look, the Chancellor's put in place a package of £22 billion to put that support in, some of which has come into place already. Uh, some more of that through the national insurance uh, thresholds comes in to help people in July this year. Uh, we do keep these things under review, but as I say, the Chancellor's got to get that balance and take the time to work through what are the long-term moves to the economy and what decisions we make in the short term that have that impact, both in terms of how we spend taxpayers' money as well as how we support that's, taxpayers. That's due to get worse because of inflation. You mentioned the Northern Ireland Protocol. We've been this morning, our reporter Jonathan Swain is out in Northern Ireland, 
has been talking about a particular guitar company and it really illustrates the issue of exporters in Northern Ireland trying to get their goods to customers. Because, because of the paperwork, uh, it takes 90 days for them to get a guitar to a customer on the mainland, the British mainland, whereas it takes three days to get that guitar to a customer in the Netherlands. We've sort of hobbled ourselves, haven't we? Well, you've just outlined, I don't know that particular case, you've just outlined in reality the, the very challenge we want to resolve. Uh, there's you there's over two... place, Mr well, Lewis. No, well, this actually, isn't... no, Susanna, that's not correct. Look, let's be very clear about this. We agreed a protocol that says in its running paper, very clearly, its vision is it won't disrupt the everyday lives of people in their communities, it will respect all aspects of the Good Friday Agreement, it will respect the UK internal market and state functions, as well as the EU single market. Well, the implementation that the EU wants to put in place breaches four of those things straight off the bat. And that is just something that isn't sustainable. We've got to ensure that products moving within the UK can do so freely and ensure that goods that are moving into the EU via Ireland obviously are properly dealt with, okay. but not right, the products minister, that are staying in the UK. In not, much, in not much more than a sentence, because we've got about 20 seconds left, um, the Governor of the Bank of England has said that to, com that to combat inflation, nobody should be asking for a pay rise. What do you say to that, given that costs are flying to the ceiling? Well, look, obviously people have got to make their own decisions. I can't speak for the independent Bank of England. I think it's right that they're independent. But we do have these challenges out there with the global economy, the pressures of inflation we're seeing around the world. This is something we as a government take very, very seriously and we will continue to monitor this. And the Chancellor will look at doing everything he can. I think we've got a good track record of supporting people, as we showed through COVID, and we'll continue to do everything we can with taxpayers' money to support taxpayers where we can and however we can as we go forward as well. OK, thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed.